Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, I want to talk about what it means to have the derivative as a rate of change. So in a lot of my other videos, uh, we really look at the derivative and we see how it represents the slope of a tangent line at a given point when we have a function. Now, when you start really looking at the derivative as a function itself, then it really opens up a lot of other things that you can do with this thing called a derivative. Uh, let me explain a little bit more. So when you treat the derivative as a function itself, what that derivative is really trying to tell us is how the function is changing with respect to its independent variable. So if I had just say a generic function up here, then what the derivative is telling me is, you know, when is it increasing or when is it decreasing or when is it possibly just staying the same or staying constant. And this is with respect to, you know, whatever independent variable it is, just x in this case. Now what makes this so powerful is that your functions could be describing a lot of other things rather than just, you know, some value of f of x. For example, maybe I have a function here and it actually represents the cost of producing washing machines. Okay, so, you know, here I would see how many washing machines I produce and this is how expensive it's going to be. So if I look at the derivative of this function, then that's telling me how my cost is changing with respect to washing machines. So I know is, is my cost going up, is my cost going down, and I can even see uh, by you know how great that derivative is, how much it's going up or how much it's going down. So we're going to try and interpret the derivative as a rate of change for you know just a, a few examples. Uh, here's another, another function. This represents the area of a circle uh, with respect to its radius. So maybe I want to go ahead and take the derivative of this thing with respect to radius. So I'd use my normal derivative rules, uh, say the power rule in this case, and bring down my 2, and end up with just 2 pi r. So this guy is my derivative. But what exactly is it telling me? Well, it's telling me how the area is changing uh, with respect to its radius. So if I did know a specific value, you know, like when the radius equals 3, I could plug that into this derivative and see that the area is changing by 6 pi. Now one really important uh, area where you want to know derivatives and how things are changing is when it involves motion. Let's look at some of the key terms and derivatives for that one. When you're dealing with motion, usually you have some sort of function that gives you the position of the object. And this might give you, say, the height of the object after some amount of time, or it might actually just give you where that uh, object is located after a certain amount of time. Now, when you look at the derivative of the position, now you want to know, well, how's the position changing over time? And this is actually giving you the velocity of that object. So how fast is it going? Now you can take another derivative of say your position, so two derivatives of your position, and now you get what is known as the acceleration. Are you speeding up? Are you slowing down? What's happening? And the neat part about acceleration is this is like taking a derivative of a derivative. So taking the derivative of your velocity. So how's your velocity changing? Is it speeding up? Is it going down? All that fun stuff. Now with position, if you take one more derivative, so this is three derivatives of position, now you get jerk. So you can feel the like lurch of a roller coaster as it starts to take off and, and other stuff like that. So in all these cases, what you're really looking at is for those keywords, you know, what is changing? And that tells you that you really want to interpret this thing as a derivative. So you'll see this in a lot of other areas. Um, and remember just to interpret derivatives as changes with respect to their independent variable. And you'll see that it does really open up a lot of different things. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.